Sunday afternoon. I got off the subway and I'm trundling down 73rd Street. And I look up at the outside wall of Rutgers Church. And what do I see but welcome to our refugee family. And I was like, wow, this is fantastic. And I knew they were Syrian. I think it said that. And I stopped. And I took a photo. And I went home and I said to my husband, oh my God, look at this. Look, 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 look. And I showed Rob and he got really excited too. So I sat down at my computer and I went onto their website and I sent them an email and I said something like, I am so excited that you're helping Syrian refugees in our community. And I've got some background in that. If there's anything I can do to help, I would love to. Andrew started preaching about the refugee issue almost two years ago. And that, I think, uh, whetted everyone's interest. So many Syrians and others were washing up on the shores of Greece. And there were these heartwarming reports of villagers coming down and feeding them and rescuing them and taking them into their homes. And, there's only so much of that they could do because the numbers were so vast. But, you know, there were sincere demonstrations of humanity. Um, I said to Andrew, I said, I can't imagine what I would do. I live in Washington Heights and I have a view of the Hudson River. I said, I can't imagine what I would do if refugees were washing up on the shores of the Hudson River and climbing the bank to my apartment building. And he said, they already are. You know, they're, they're arriving now with no one really to help them. For me, uh, really, that uh, late summer of uh, 2015 uh, was kind of a very breaking point where I thought, you know, now, you know, from teaching and preaching, uh, we should probably s start thinking about doing something. It, it was a very strange moment because I remember I was at home um, on my couch, you know, reading the news on the computer and just, and just, um, just crying. I was, I, I was reading and like watching, pic let's see, I saw pictures of, you know, the refugees crossing uh, the Mediterranean and I just like, I just couldn't stop crying and I I just prayed kind of silently and I was just like, is there anything I can do, you know, anything meaningful I can do? And um, that evening, Pastor Andre sent me an email and he said, um, there are a few of us who uh, would like to start a task force on the refugee issue. And it was just that feeling that I can't change the world, I can't do a whole lot. Um, even in this situation, I can't do a lot, but I can do something. And I just felt that we could do something. It was a really interesting first meeting because none, none of us had any idea what, what concrete things we could actually do. And that began almost a, uh, the, that was the momentum for figuring out what could we do you know, not just write a check, but then the possibility of co-sponsoring a family began to emerge. We started to kind of like uh, try to figure out, have you heard about some organization or other church uh, doing this? Nancy had found um, Church World Service through, just, just by reading, you know, the news, I think she found an article in the New York Times and she emailed it to all of us and you know she just reached out to them. So we had a meeting at Rutgers uh, to learn about what Church World Service was doing. It wasn't until I guess February that they called and said we have a family coming in three weeks and that's usually the amount of notice they have is three weeks. Um, could you be co-sponsors? And it was a Syrian family of six. It's really Dave Mammon who has said, if we could just help this one family, uh, it, would, it, would, it would mean so much. And so it just seemed like such a, well, a Christian thing to do. Yeah. 
to help a family that doesn't have anyone to turn to. And there was like a huge list of tasks and which were sent out to people at Rutgers. I think it went live and within a few hours um, the list was completely filled. Huge amounts of donations of furniture, of clothing, of uh, children's things, you know, crib. I mean, it was, it was, that just all came. You, you always struggle to attract uh, people to, to come to congregation, to come to worship, to participate in a Christian education and other things. But as soon as we started to work on refugees, uh, helpers appeared. And that to me was the most extraordinary thing out of all of this. All the people who said, please let me help, what can I do? One guy who joined our church but then went right out to California but he wanted to be baptized or, or uh, confirmed or whatever in our church, uh, when he heard about it, he had all his furniture in storage, practically brand new, um, here in Manhattan. He offered to just give it all, and he did. And then there were people who um, came and cleaned the apartment, and I mean, real, you know, with a toothbrush cleaning. And that was great because it got me working alongside church members in a very different way. Uh, you know, we weren't around a table talking about things. We were cleaning bathrooms and cleaning kitchens. It was the physicality of being able to help, you know, Going over there to the apartment, getting it ready. I'm very good at washing things, you know, so I could clean out the refrigerator. And that made me feel more than anything that I was helping, that there was going to be a family who was going to live here and the refrigerator is going to be clean. One of the things that became so excited, exciting to me about the Rutgers program is that this family was welcomed at the airport by church members that you know, the church community had been in there and stocked the refrigerator with appropriate foods, with halal foods, you know, had bought stuff for the kids. And everybody sort of knew what they could do best and, and came forward to, for it. So my, my piece of it was uh, getting to be, to be sure that they would get their benefits uh, that they needed to start life here. She and Dave were instrumental in seeing that that family got settled, had, you know, got into school, got the, had the kids get their shots, and, you know, the millions of things that we certainly hadn't thought about, you know, not, we hadn't thought about most of this, and yet, you know, little by little, you accomplish it. We've had volunteers who've helped with English Second Language training, Bill Bailey, who is, has gone almost every week, to, he's a former teacher, retired teacher, to go and, and help the family. And their English was so rudimentary um, that in the beginning it was really a challenge um, to uh, where to start um, when they just understood so little. But um, as I think I said last uh, Sunday, the energy that this family has, their, their enthusiasm for learning, their, um, their love of each other as a family uh, was so uh, wonderful to be part of. It also help me understand the reach that Rutgers Church can have. I mean, we're, we often think of ourselves as, you know, 110, 115 members on the Upper West Side, but pretty quickly we were several circles out beyond that. You know, friends told friends, we told friends. So we've actually had neighbors who've hosted fundraising dinners, you know, a dinner raising $4,000 just in one night of just like friends who get together and try to help. So I decided, you know, I'm going to do this dinner and, you know, it would be a fundraiser and 
you know, so I just had so many friends, more friends than I thought, you know, would be interested. And, you know, people really were, you know, people who couldn't come, you know, some people who saw it on Facebook, et cetera, just were really excited. And, you know, some of that is it's, it's a release from, you know, sort of feeling, you know, walking around feeling beaten down and despondent and fearful in terms of, you know, what could be coming. I spoke with Ahmad and Mayada uh, at one point uh, about what they were facing as Sunni Muslims and as immigrants in a hostile country. Not overly, but that that hostility was huge. Um, and they had spoken about their strong, strong dislike of both ISIS and um, Assad. Um, when I told them, uh, I got emotional about it. They call me Uncle Bill. <laughs> When people start with the personal and the personal relationship, it colors everything else. This congregation now knows this one family. We know what good parents um, they are to their children. We know that their relationship as husband and wife is as equal as I've ever seen it. So when those things happen, any kind of stereotypes or chatter fall away. Sometimes it's hard to be an American because there's some stuff I'm really not proud of. But one thing that I have always held above all, really, in terms of this country is letting people be here. Right? Letting people find refuge, letting people find opportunity here. And that is vitally important to me. It's vitally important to the country. And yet, when you think about our history as a country, that's what we're made of. All those people came in those little boats to begin with. You know, my, my own family literally <laughs> came over on the Mayflower, and they, for religious reasons, um, and then my kids' spouses, uh, Italian and Greek uh, and uh, Polish and Irish, and all coming uh, either for opportunity or out of des desperation. This family is just a, an updated version of those first people. The idea that we are doing in this country now this kind of profiling and this kind of assumption that these people, in quotes, shouldn't be here because of their religion is so not okay. It's a populism of the worst kind, which we, we talked about those who are uh, insecure in their own tradition and so on. This is playing into those insecurities rather than educating people and allowing them to, to learn about their own tradition and internalize the strength of their own tradition. Andrew has been uh, progressively leading us to step outside ourselves, to look beyond the walls, to think of this building as a building for everybody, not Presbyterians. He's teaching us how to be free to do what we are called to do. And, and not being shy about it, saying, you know, faith is leading us to do this. Why do you do that? Because of our faith tradition, because of our history, because of what Bible teaches us, because of what Jesus presented because of what people of God, Israelites, went through. I like his idea that it all should be joyful and you should have fun. And, and so I think that was part of it, that it wasn't only taken as this dark, serious thing, but as a way of sharing, providing, experiencing other people. 
you know, so it became nice and fun, you know, joyful. It's, it's really been a wonderful experience. I think I've, I've been given as much, much more than I've given. You know, some of my friends compliment me on my sacrifice. Well, it isn't a sacrifice, believe me, in any way, shape, or form. form. It's just nothing but pleasure to be with them. They had us to their house just a couple of weeks ago, and that was extraordinary. That was so nice. And, you know, in the end, we were all kissing each other, and, you know, it was like, oh, this is family. I do know these people.